Hello, I'm Linda Marie Cologne, your host for Making It Artists and Stories. And I'm here with Charles Bozinski, or Charlie as he's known to friends and now to viewers, street photographer, landscape photographer, and veteran upholsterer from Lions Upholstery for four decades. Wow. And now, <laughs> the photographer who's hitting the streets with his photos that we'll be seeing here at WPAA. It's been seven years. Yes. You're semi-retired. I go in to work when it rains. Mm -hmm. So your, <laughs> your trade as an upholsterer has yes. taken you over four decades. Yes. Where you've been serving clients of Wallingford and other surrounding towns who go to Lions Upholstery and may recognize you from there. And you decided seven years ago that you were going to pursue the photography finally as a hobby. Just start us off with telling us a little bit about your history with the camera and when you first took one in your hands and then revisited it. Well, many years ago, I picked up a camera, uh, took a small course how to operate it, mm -hmm. and so forth. And then, uh, as I uh, mentioned earlier, uh, you get married, you have kids, you remodel the house, and you put certain things aside. Mm -hmm. No and time the, for hobbies. Yeah, no time for hobbies. The kids grew up. Mm -hmm. uh, they moved out of the house, and uh, I picked up a camera and started just randomly photographing nature and landscapes. And my friends, when they would come over to the house, uh, I'd be at the computer, and they would say, what are you doing with these photos? And I said, I'm having fun. Mm -hmm. And they point blank told me, sell them. Sell and the photos. Sell them. And I was a non-believer and said, yeah, sure, sure. They kept after me, and I gave them the same reply, sure, sure. Mm -hmm. And one day I said, my friends are a lot smarter than I am. And I bought a tent. I had cards printed up. I started looking for fares. I paid my uh, entrance fees mm -hmm. and was shocked when people were buying my photos. And initially, you focused on landscape. Yes. So yes. behind you, actually, I see some amazing landscapes. Okay. That's up in Vermont. So you will travel throughout the Northeast. Yeah. Come this on. one here in the front was in uh, Orange, Connecticut. Uh, actually, I was doing an errand for the upholstery shop. Okay. And I hardly ever got out that way. And I said, well, let me take my camera with me. And I saw that. And... I said, today's my day. <laughs> Definitely was your day, because judging from that picture, if that wasn't styled and set, uh, that's an amazing shot that you caught. When I fill out my entrance fees for the, uh, uh, the fairs, they, one of the questions they always ask is, uh, what is your craft? Mm -hmm. And I, on every application, I put down photography of New England. Okay. So all of my photos are in the New England area mm -hmm. at this point. Okay, so you'll travel throughout the Northeast, we'll say, New yes, England specifically. Yes. yes. When I first started, I started out, as, as we talked about, with mm -hmm. uh, landscape. And then I wanted to start doing people and uh, not coming from a big family. Uh, I didn't have a lot of subjects to say, sit down and mm -hmm. let me photograph you. Family portraits, yeah. holidays. Right. So I, uh, I said, well, there's plenty of people out in the street. Mm -hmm. So I went out and started photographing people, and then having grown up, uh, let's say on the rougher side, uh, not with a silver spoon in my mouth, uh, I was constantly being drawn to people who uh, did not have mm -hmm. uh, a, a good life, or were continuing not to have a good life. And I started photographing these people. And I started capturing moods. Uh, there were people that would cry when I took their photograph. Uh, and I said to myself, uh, they need a voice. Mm -hmm. They have a story. Yeah, and they have a story. I started photographing and photographing and not realizing uh, that something like this would happen. But when I would show my friends, uh, the photos, they say, well, what did you photograph yesterday, or what did you photograph last week? And I pull out my, if I had my camera with me, or if I downloaded them to my phone, I would show them, and they would 
kind of overwhelmingly say, you're not going to make any money. No, no one's going to buy these. Who's going to hang this on their living room wall? Interesting. And I looked at them and I said, probably nobody. Mm -hmm. I said, but uh, I see beauty in this. I see uh, something that a lot of people will just walk by. Mm -hmm. and, uh, and I just kept doing it and doing it. And uh, here we are. And now for the last two summers, you've really been focusing on um, imagery from the streets. From the streets, yeah. And actually the subject matter of um, anyone who's willing to be yeah, a subject. Some, some people get mad at me. And refuse. Oh, yeah. Yeah, there's, there's rejection. Okay. I don't want to say I'm immune mm -hmm. to rejection, but I have thick skin. Uh, so you'll offer, take a picture, and if they refuse, you move on. And yeah. Yeah. Are most people receptive? On a particular day, it could be more receptive. Mm -hmm. And then on other days, it could be less receptive. Mm -hmm. and uh, you, so you I take whatever is in front of me. How but do you I, choose I, your site? Uh, you drive through Connecticut or you drive up throughout New England? Yes. And how do you know when, where to stop? I mean, obviously here, we talked about this great picture yeah. in Orange, Connecticut, and you just, you know. Well, when I, when I first started, uh, I had an advantage. Uh, I had a motorcycle, ah. and I was easily distracted, mm -hmm. and that worked out great because I could, if I saw something, I could easily pull over and uh, not obstruct anything. Mm -hmm. Literally, when I first started, I would head out in a direction, let's say up north, that I didn't care where I was going. I would say to my wife, "I'll I'll be back in a couple days," and I would just what's down this road. What's down that road? Mm -hmm. What's down this road? And at the end of a few days, I would press go home on my Garmin. Mm -hmm. And uh, really, and I just kept doing that. Adventurous. <laughs> yes. Yeah. And obviously the fruits of your adventures yeah. we're seeing. I read a quote from someone, another photographer, mm -hmm. and they said, I don't take photos. They capture me. And that that sums up my my whole feeling mm -hmm. that every time I see something like this, it it captures me. And that's how you know yeah. that that's the photo yeah. to take. Yeah, I was wondering how you choose your subjects and yeah. your landscapes, and it just whatever pulls you in. Yes. Tell us a little bit about the collage here. Uh, definitely caught my eye. And now you have an exhibit. It's not so much uh, about me having an exhibit. Mm -hmm. Uh, it's more, it, to me, it's more about the people. They, like I said, they, they have a voice. They have a lifestyle that they, uh, for many of them, they'll probably never get out of. Mm -hmm. uh, it, it's not like someone's going to come by. Uh, how many employers are going to come by these people and offer them a job? Mm -hmm. uh, and, I, and, I, and I would see this, and I would see the despair, and I would see... You know their their lifestyle and uh, and it and it touched me mm -hmm. and uh, and here we are about to embark on a an exhibit showing this to uh, and help uh, Masters Mana. And I want to read something, and this is from one of the subjects that you photographed, and perhaps it's from someone here. As one of the people in the photo said, every day I am invisible, every day people pass me by. But your picture of me seen on social media is called beautiful. I do not know what they see, but I know that my picture, your picture of me, reminds me that I have value. I think that is a <laughs> tremendous compliment. There's more to the story. And a gift. Tell yeah. us. I remember the young lady. The first time I saw her, uh, she had a sign, and she had a, a large belly. Mm -hmm. And she said, I'm pregnant, can you help? And uh, I would pass her all the time. You know, as time went on, you know, one day I saw her, and, you know, this was after the summer had gone by. Mm -hmm. And uh, the next summer I, I went back out, and her, she had had a baby. Okay. And uh, we got on a first name basis, and I would always say to her, you know, when I walked by, I would say, "Someday, Pam, 
I got to take your photo. And she said, no. And I, if I happened to be in town again, I'd, I'd say, someday, Pam. She goes, no. Mm -hmm. So initially she was not receptive. So one time when I went by, uh, she said, I've been thinking. And I said, I'll tell you what. I'll come back tomorrow. Now, this is a street person. Mm -hmm. And I said, I'll come back tomorrow. And I said, you look pretty. And I went back tomorrow. And uh, I see her kind of cleaned up. Mm -hmm. with earrings on oh wow <laughs> she was ready for her photo shoot <laughs> oh wow and i said pam and she goes yeah today's the day today's the day oh that's amazing yeah it, it's been a remarkable journey mm -hmm. uh, to be able to to touch uh, someone's life mm -hmm. uh, and i think bringing them to others through social media and yeah. facebook and instagram you have people liking and sharing these photos and then turning it into an exhibit, which we're excited for. All I can say is uh, it, it's amazing, and I and I think uh, I thank WPAA for the exposure. Mm -hmm. uh, I thank them for their vision uh, of reaching out to what what I see. They they see the same thing that I see. Mm -hmm. uh, and then bringing it to others. Yeah. So now we can come and see the work. And all your subjects, and um, I think that being able to help Masters Mana, so oh. all the visitors coming with a non-perishable item, um, and and donating, I think that's going to be an, an incredible opportunity to give will, back. Will we solve the problem? No, but will we help the problem? Yes. Yeah, it'll make a pretty <laughs> big dent. So, if I had to jump back 20, 30 years ago and say, you know, someday when you're retired, uh, you're going to have a bunch of photos on display that are going to touch <laughs> people and help people. I'd probably go, yeah, right. <laughs> but here we are. Yeah, and do you find yeah. that being behind the camera, are you a little bit more outgoing? Oh, yeah. Versus a conversation that maybe if you were walking through a neighborhood, you probably wouldn't stop or you might just, you know, acknowledge someone and that be about it. And you think that the camera is almost um, a tool that allows you to have a greater engagement. Having the camera, um, it, it forces me uh, to go the extra mile. Mm -hmm. And talking about the subjects that you photograph, I know that within the book, it's focused all on people, all on homeless people throughout the Northeast. And we have a crisis right here in Connecticut with a large amount being children as well as U.S. veterans who have served in the military and have found themselves homeless through uh, their return. Uh, if I may, there's a gentleman in the book uh, that when I took his photo, he asked me if he could have a... A copy of it. Sure. He has the flag. There he is. Okay. Wow. Uh, Steve is a veteran, and uh, I would pass by, and uh, I, I donate when I can. I can't donate to every mm -hmm. everyone that I walk by, and there's certain people that kind of just grab my heart, and I, and, sure. and I donate. And uh, I took his picture, and he said, Charlie. And I said, yeah, Steve. And he said, uh, can I get a copy of that? And I said, absolutely. So the next time I was in town, I, I, I brought the print to him, and, and he was thrilled. Mm -hmm. And about a week later, I was, I was back in the town, and, uh, and I said, Did you, how'd you like it, Steve, after you got used to it? And he said, well, I, I, I loved it, but he said, uh, I was sleeping, and someone stole everything that I have, including the photo. Oh, wow. Photo and all. Photo and all. And uh, oh, that's devastating. To, to having served in the country, mm -hmm. and then and then to be down on your luck. Yes. And then to have someone come by and steal everything that you have. Mm -hmm. uh, so I told him, uh, I'll get you another one. Of course, you yeah. replace it. Yeah. Frame it. Yeah. 
deservedly so. Well, that's a great story. And I know that Masters Mana helps out a lot of our local homeless um, children, adults, veterans. So the recipients of the non-perishable items uh, through the, the art show will be a great way of giving back. So I hope our viewers will come with non-perishables in hand. And, and, I, and I hope they have to rent a truck. In order to, to get everything to, over to, there. To get yeah. everything over there. And uh, yeah, that'll be our task is to get the word out to come meet you, Charlie, come see the photos and bring your non-perishables so we can help pay it forward. Okay. Well, thank you, Charlie. Thank you. Hopefully all of you out there watching, please save the date and plan to come by WPAA on the last Sunday in April, three to five is open house to everyone. Bring a non-perishable item, help our local organization, Masters Mana. Come meet Charlie, come see these amazing pictures and see the value and the voices that he's given to the voiceless um, of our homeless folks and help pay it forward. I'm Linda Marie Cologne for Making It Artisan Stories and thank you for watching. Thank you, Charlie, for coming by. Thank you for having me. I'm, uh, I'm on Facebook and Instagram. Under Charles Basinski. I just say if you can type my name, you can find me.